What's up guys, my name is Alex and I'm here to show you how to play the super triple beginner basic version of Seven Days to Die so you have like a general idea of how it works. So uh, if you saw the last video, you're all up to date, you know what we're doing, we're going to start with the trader. Now the trader is a pretty significant aspect of the game, uh, at least it seems like the game wants you to feel like the trader is a very significant aspect of the game. I don't really go to the traders that often. Um, the trader is basically an NPC, he is a non-player character, uh, there are a number of traders throughout the map, um, and they have quests available for you to do for XP, um, and there is XP in this game, we will go, we will go through that. Um, you can trade items, uh, there is a currency, they're called dukes, they're little kind of dukes casino coins, and there's paper money that you can trade for dukes. Um, and uh, that's basically what the trader's for. So uh, we're going to start out by finding that. So we start out, first of all, here you can see Journey to Settlement, Locate Trader. He's that far away. This bird is still here, though, by the way. So um, now we can look on our map and we can see this little exclamation point. Also, though, we can see at the top of our screen here this little exclamation point. So let's head straight towards that. Now we know where this is because we have a bedroll here. You see that? So if we actually look at our map, if we look at our map, we see our little bed here. So let's go this way and we will just head in that direction. Now I will mention that it's 16 hundo. Uh, 16 o'clock, 16 whatever, uh, 1600 hours, which means that 2200 hours is coming up and the trader is closed at nighttime. So don't feel like you can hide out at the trader. Uh, he doesn't care. <laughs> about anything. He just cares about making his dukes and giving you quests. And sometimes they're a little rude. I mean, I didn't want to say it because, you know, nobody wants to say it, but they're, you know, they have a little bit of an attitude, like a little bit. So let's just get there. So we have a few things right now that I'm trying to think we need to do. One, it's going to be nighttime soon and we're going to have to survive. So we have a few options to do that. Um, one, you could find a tree like this. I like these kind of trees and just crouch by pressing the left control button. And you can kind of hide under here. Uh, that's an option. I prefer to make a little house. How a burning zombie is in water and not extinguished, we are not going to question. Uh, you will also notice there is a, oh no, I'm wet, there's something, water, saturation, not a thing in the game right now, so just don't even. Ooh! And, totally side note, and some people might say it's beginner, some people may say, what? Why are you showing this in the beginner video? But it's here. This will give you honey. If the zombies scratch you, you can get a zombie infection. Sometimes you get honey, sometimes you don't. Always break those down with an X. So, let's keep moving. If we see any... I mean, you're always kind of collecting resources, right? Collecting resources is kind of a significant part of this game. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, cool. We can hide behind a tree, worst case scenario. I would like to build some kind of base. We're not surviving in a house. Don't do that when you're first starting. Just don't. Don't do that. Thought I picked that up. Don't believe I did. Okay, so the trader should be coming up here pretty soon. We have a little nice little burned out town here, which we will never come to again, most likely, unless we're looting for a very limited period of time. Alright, nice little streetlights though, that's nice. How everything turned to dust except for the streetlights again. We're, ooh, see, we got two of them. You can see them a lot more here. And again, if you did not know, I'm pressing E to open and R to collect all. So anything that you open, like here, if there's like six things in it, you could press R and it'll automatically take it all, put it in your inventory, and you can just keep on running, which is obviously really important. Now, I shouldn't spend too much time looting because we are keeping a very close eye on that time and we do not want to have a problem. So let's just get to this trader. Now, I would almost even recommend for someone who's starting in their first game and it's 17 o'clock, um, to say, maybe wait till morning. Probably could wait till morning. Uh, I feel pretty good about the amount of time we have. Um, <clears throat> but if it's too late for you, don't be afraid to just like hide out for the first night and wait till morning. That's really one really good way of surviving this game. You know, take your time. Yes, there's a million things on a list that you really have to do. And the seventh day horde day is coming up. Uh, but, you know. One thing at a time. So this is Trader Joel. There's different traders throughout the map. I think there's around five on a um, random gen. You might find more. Zombies cannot actually get in here. 
See if you hear that? I can't break this down and neither can zombies. This is sort of a safe zone. But again, it it does it does close down okay, and you fucker. You respect the shop rules and we'll get along just fine. Like I said, a little bit rude. A little bit. Um uh, but you know what? Also fair. Um uh, okay, so you can look through his inventory. This changes every day. Um so the cost of the different things, you get a little quick sneak peek at all the things you can buy. Uh, AK-47, whatever. Um, okay, cool. So now we have the trader, and we're going to close the door, and we're going to be looking for four major things that you use in the game. One, you're going to be looking for a workbench. Two, a cement mixer. Three, a forge. Four, a chemistry station. Those are your four major machines in this game. So one, cement mixer, broken. A lot of times they are. I'm not going to bother taking what's in it. Two, workbench. Second bellows. Okay, sure game. It's like it mocks me, you know? Uh, these w will be in different locations, but this one. Oh, forge. This works. Good. That means that in the daytime, you can come here and you can use this forge. So that's a good thing to know. Now, the chemistry station is somewhere maybe in here. Um... Yes, chemistry station. And the chemistry station works. Cool, okay. So, uh, right now we don't need to use any of them. We just remember the fact that they're here and we open our map with M, we zoom in, we right click. Now you're gonna wanna go save waypoint. Now I like to use the X because like laziness, but I'm sure there's some kind of very complicated system you're supposed to use with all these little tabs. So, traitor. Boom, done. All right, now we need to head home because it is 18 o'clock and it is starting to get a little dark. So on the top of our screen, you can see, oh no, we're gonna use this. You can see our little bed. So we are going to get there as fast as we can. <laughs> Make sure that's closed, yes. Now if you're in there after 2200, uh, he will just kick you out and you're just gonna respawn like right here and you're gonna be like, whoa, what happened? Where am I? And then it's nighttime and you're in a burning area, so don't do that. Ooh, we have found another one. I am certainly pushing the time a little bit later than I would even like. Ooh, I got honey. Excellent. And like I said, honey is used for antibiotics. All right. I think we will have enough time. I think we're good. I'm going to grab some wood along the way. How much wood do we have? This is going to be a very basic, small little hidey hole. It's a very like super basic start, but that's okay. Uh, doesn't need to be anything fancy day one. And you can always build up things, tear them down, use the wood again, you know. I mean, you don't get 100% back for what you destroy, but it's fine. So I'm just going to finish this up, get the bonus XP. And then I will go through all the XP basics and things like that, but don't worry about that like on your first day. First night, if you finish all your quests, and again, you don't have to finish them all on the first day, it's not the end of the world. But if you do, and you're keeping up with this in whatever world that you're in, and uh, whichever place that you spawned, if it's random gen or whatever, um, these guys are a little bit tricky. You can crouch uh, using left control, and you can hit them like that. I would recommend that, um, but you get less mobility, so... Maybe at the beginning, avoid those guys. So let's just keep moving so that we can get out of this area before nightfall. We'll cross the river. Didn't we cross the river? The river is a good thing to keep in mind when you find it and uh, because you're gonna need water. So if you do find water somewhere, just keep a little mental note. You can mark it off as well using a little X or whatever symbol system that you want to use. So you're going to be able to find it again. All right, it's 19 o'clock. Now my stamina here is getting a little low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make like 20 blocks. So this is going to be doing this while I'm moving. Saves you a few seconds here or there. Long term, you're obviously going to use a lot more because you're going to have things. Some things might take you an hour to craft. Some things might take you an hour and a half to craft. You know, it all depends on what it is. The average item is never going to take you an hour and a half to craft. It's like, I'm going to craft a thousand arrows. Then yeah, that might take you like 58 minutes to finish. Or I'm going to make a thousand bullets, you know, things like that. But if most items are not going to take that long. 
like when you make your first forge, uh, which we found back at the trader. I think that takes three minutes and 50 seconds or something like that to craft. So you're gonna get used to crafting and being busy. So multitasking in this game is a big aspect. But generally, I think the name of the game with Seven Days to Die is multitasking. That's what you do. You are multitasking. You're keeping mindful of the time, mindful of the horde day, mindful of your supplies, mindful of what you're trying, all the different zombies that could be around you, what you're trying to achieve, your progression in the game, collecting resources. It's a lot. Uh, but we're going to just take all that away and simplify here. Super basic, super beginner. Okay, so we have one block placed here, which is nice. I'm going to take my 20 frames and I'm just going to put a very basic kind of grid-like structure around it. Now remember what I said about structure mattering. It does matter. Matter? Okay. I'm gonna need more. Okay, let's do 25. I want to make sure there's enough to upgrade the blocks, so I'm gonna leave a hole in the front because we do have doors. Now this, not the best design ever. It's not, but that's okay. All right, now I'm going to click this and press A because A will uh, repair it. And then just right click, continuously right click and just keep moving. Now, some people might say, make sure that you are upgrading from the bottom up because, you know, structural integrity, the more wood you're adding to the block, the heavier the block is getting. And you can click on the specific block to see like what its weight is. I mean, the mass of this is 20 and you know, that kind of thing, vertical support. You can look into things like that. Why are you not, let's break this. But when it comes to like your very basic starter few blocks, it's not the end of the world. But nonetheless, we may have to take out some grass around it, clearly. You can also upgrade these to a higher level of wooden blocks, so try not to be too wasteful with that because you don't need it to be that. The whole idea of this is having a place to hide. You want to have a place that you're totally encased by, no windows, anything like that, and you want to make sure that you're fully in there, fully secure, and I mean, you technically could probably leave a door open and just hide inside there, and unless the zombies walked like right in front of the door, stopped, and then like looked at you and saw you, and then at that moment you decided to jump, they probably wouldn't see you. But because I like to move around at night and like, you know, craft things and kind of get things organized, I just like to fully encase. I like to be fully encased and secure. So yeah, fun fact, there was a version of this game. I have played this game since alpha two, I believe, three, two or three, um, and that was many moons ago. And uh, there have been versions of this game where literally if you did anything, if you opened your inventory, if you opened a fire like this and made a noise, all the zombies would just know you were there and they would descend upon you at the nighttime. It was very stressful. Okay, this is a very tiny little hidey hole. And to go with the door, I'm just gonna literally look up door. This is what you're gonna want. Craft one of the doors, throw it on the front of the house, and boom, you have a little hidey hole to start out with. It is a start. I mean, you could take this and you could expand it. You could put wings on the houses and, and have like different rooms and maybe we'll do that. Who knows? Also something you might want to do is put a little bit of a wood stair, you know? Uh, you got some railing options as well. That can be fun, but you need, you need things to be able to do that. So just don't, don't worry about that at this point. Just make some stairs. Boom. There you go. Now I am going to take a look at what I have. I have a little bit of stone, a little bit of wood. I don't think I need anything right off the cuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna crouch, left control, I'm gonna take a look around. Do I see any zombies? Back up, close the door. Now, if a zombie sees you coming into this house, they will continue to go towards you. If, they, if they've seen you, if they've triggered on you and they're heading towards you, if you try to run away from a zombie and hide here, there's a chance that you'll lose them if you run enough of a distance, but they're probably gonna follow you through. Now, at this point, we are safe here. We are in our home. When nighttime hits at 22 o'clock, 
and you will hear the noise when it hits. Uh, yeah, we're we're in we're in here for the night. Now this is obviously not ideal, but you know we wanted to go for the trader, so whatever. Okay, now a few things that I want to craft right at the very start, very first night. I want to make a secure storage chest. You want to have a storage chest, of course. You don't want to be full of inventory you know for the rest of your life so i'm just going to throw that up on the wall there you can put it on the wall you can put it on the floor you can do whatever you want to do with it i also press and hold e and unlock this now you can keep it locked if you're on a server with other people you can set a little passcode thing that's fine i just automatically do it unlocked because whenever i'm on a server it's people that i know so yeah I'm not too worried that people are going to steal things. <laughs> and even still, even if it is locked, a person can just come up, take an axe, and just break down a wooden chest, like one layer of it, which is not that much, and then they can get in anyway. So yeah, I automatically unlock that. And I'm just going to left shift and left click. And that is going to put the things, I'm going to keep that, uh, in there. Our two, two advanced bellows, okay. Uh, put that in there, just put the rest of that. We can keep the torch on us if we want to. And then here as well, this is sort inventory. So it will just reorganize everything and compile everything that is in its, it should be stacked up. Like if you do this, it should, yeah, it stacks it up. So that's a nice way of organizing things. So that's done, we've done that, success. Okay, now the thing that you need to know about this game that takes you from super basic, like what do I do to like, okay, now we actually have to do things, is understanding how the XP system works. And it took me a little while to fully get it as well. So I'm gonna press tab again, bring this up, and we're gonna look right here, right above our, I hear a zombie. He shouldn't know that we're here. Uh, right above this rate, which, but they still can, sometimes they do, sometimes they spontaneously do, you like sneeze or whatever, and they somehow sense it, and it's all downhill from there. So, Unless we start hearing them break into the door, we're just going to assume we're fine. Um, so right here, this blue line right here, um, that is your XP bar. That zombie's getting really close. Is it it? Now at this point, if they're like literally right outside of your structure, you want to be like a little bit careful about jumping around or hitting on any kind of blocks or doing anything like that. But I think we're good. Okay, so right here you have your... Are they able to hear that? I don't think they can hear that. And you hear that sound? Night just hit. So now they can run. Zombies can also jump. I don't know why this zombie is so into our base. Like, is there a hole somewhere that I've forgotten? No. I don't know why it's doing what it's doing. This is like, I usually feel like generally pretty unusual. And it's spooking me out. It's spooking me out. It's spooking me out. Okay, we're just gonna ignore that zombie and hope for the best. If we start hearing like a huge loud noise of it like breaking through, then we'll deal with that. Otherwise, we're just gonna pretend like it's not there and hope for the best. This number down here also will tell you how sort of seeable you are. It's pretty low. So they shouldn't be able to. Okay, so you have your XP bar here. The more you kill zombies, the more you get resources, things like that, this is gonna fill up, okay? So what do you do with your XP? So your XP is gonna give you levels and it's not like you're leveling up as much as it is that it's giving you an extra point that you can spend. So at the top of your screen, you see the word uh, crafting. You see your crafting, you got your character screen, you got your map, you got your skills with a little dude with a graduation cap. Click skills. now. Hello, okay, five million tabs and all the options. And when you're new, how are you supposed to know? Well, you're not supposed to know. It took me a while and I asked a lot of people a lot of questions. Like I said, I streamed this. So thankfully I've been able to ask people questions. Um, 
And as far as I can tell, the, at least the way that I do it, is there are sort of like five major aspects to this game that you're going to be focusing on. You're going to be focusing on your food and your water. That's pretty important. You're going to, well, I guess food and water. You're going to be focusing on, and that's like cooking and things like that. Uh, you know, you're going to be making your farms, etc. Uh, you're going to be focusing on your zombie killing, which is your weapons. You're going to be focusing on collecting resources, mining, chopping down trees, things like that. You're focusing on health, and you're focusing on your progression and capabilities in the game. So, to give you the lowdown of basically what your priorities are, uh, I'm going to start with intellect here. Uh, so you got your perception, your strength, your fortitude, your agility, your intellect, and then you have this perk books here. We'll ignore that for now. We'll get into that later. Um, okay, so if you click intellect, you're going to go down and you're going to see a lot of different things. This is really focusing heavily on like your progression. So like sciences, all these really cool, weird fuels and things that you can make. Advanced engineering. This is going to be a huge focus for you because it's how you make forges. It's how you get into your workbenches. It's how you make your cement mixers and, and how you make. So when you're doing your first horde day, you may be thinking, okay, I'm going to put up a wood wall. By the time you're at your fourth or your fifth horde day, you're going to need cement walls. You know, you're going to be needing like serious level things to try to protect you. So right at the beginning, just to start, just for the beginning, we're going to be putting a point into engineering. That's one point. You'll see right here the amount of points are available. You're going to get four points for finishing all your first quest and handing it into the trader. So boom, you have this done. Yay. Now, the next thing that I personally put a point into is healing factor. Now, some people might not do that, but I feel like early game, your food is low, your water is low. And also let's go through that here quickly on your crafting or your crafting your character window. On the upper left, you're going to see stats. Now here it's showing your food and your water. Now, if your food and your water are maxed out, if you've eaten enough food and drinking enough water and they're all the way to the top out of 100 or above that even, you're gonna heal really, really well. Things are great. But at this point, you don't really have a consistent food source. So it's a little bit of a problem um, to heal at this point. So that's why really early days, I like to go over here, again, clicking on skills, clicking on fortitude, and putting a point into healing factor because this gives you regardless of your food and water level food water food levels it gives you one health point every 60 seconds natural healing yes um now the next thing that i personally like to put a point into is minor 69er another option is mother load this gives you 20 percent more or stone terrain blocks trees if you don't do it at the beginning that's fine you're going to use it later so again, these settings are all for single player. So keep that in mind. If you're in a multiplayer server, you can have one person do all of the strength attributes and you can have another person do all of the intellect attributes and then it all kind of evens out for people. Um, but for this here, we're going to do this one, Tool Nipper, because this gives you level two axes and different tools like that out of five possible maximum levels. Now, when you want to go to the next one, the way that they've done this entire system here is you can't just get one more point and then boom, go to the next one, another point, you know, again here by getting your XP up, uh, boom, going to the next one. You have to put points into the overall. So for Minor 69 er for example, to get to here, it is locked and it says strength level five. So that means that you have to put points all the way to level five. And this is one point, one point, one point. Once you get to level five, then you can come down and you can put one point into mother load, uh, assuming that, or minor 69er, assuming that you already have this previous level done already. So it's kind of a pain. It seems like there's like three levels, but really there's not. There's like six levels because you have to put half your points into strength at the very top. And then you have to come back to what you want and make sure you have that prerequisite and then put one point into that. Yeah. So the, let's see, the other option for us here is Javelin Master. Now I've shown you the booper. This is the booper here. Don't think the zombie saw that. This is the booper. It's shorter uh, range um, in terms of attacking um, and it does 13 damage, which isn't bad. But a weapon that I would highly recommend early days, and I, d I made this first because it was on the quest line, but the Stone Spear which I'm going to craft one of, is a pretty significant advantage in terms of distance from the zombies. You can be out of the range of their swing to hit you and still hit them. 
So if anybody played early Minecraft days, you may remember the frustration of every time you hit a zombie, you, in order to hit them, you had to get close enough for them to hit you. So you're always losing points and they're taking points. So it was this constant kind of battle. This game isn't that bad, but sometimes it could really feel like you need more range. So when you need that, this is the poker, AKA the stone spear. Now you're only doing 10 damage, but it has a power attack mode. In order to do the power attack, you right click, you hold it back and you throw the spear. Now you can throw it a pretty decent distance and it does a lot of damage. If you can hit them right in the head, they're dead most of the time. Uh, I'm just gonna scroll off that so I don't actually throw it and attract all the zombies to our place. So uh, at this point we're making level one spears and level one, well now we're making level two stone axes, um, but that's how you level things up. So you can repair it one item as many times as you want. But if I now, because I got minor 69er, it's showing me I can make level two. So I will make a level two stone axe and if I put a point into the stone spear, it will make me level two stone spears. And then after that, I can just take this, scrap it, and I can get some stone back from that. So you can put it into Javelin Master. It's an option. Uh, some people like to put points into looting. Um, you loot a little bit faster. You get a little bit of a more loot bonus, a chance of getting better things. Um, sexual Tyrannosaurus is really good because it gives you a little bit more stamina. Now, you got your health and your stamina here on the bottom left of your screen. Those are your main two aspects. Your, <clears throat> your blue is your stamina and your red is your health. Um, you're going to really be feeling your stamina levels hurting you early on. Uh, it's a nightmare. But uh, over time, I'm not somebody personally that'll put a point into this, but many, many, many people will tell you to put a point into this. So that's an option that you can make totally your call. Uh, now, the other thing that you have to remember, like I said, out of the five things, food and water. Now, early days now in this game, you cannot just make food. I think you can make, I don't know, maybe like burnt meat or something, but you're going to want to make something a little bit better than that. So we are going to go down to... Uh, I don't know where it is. I thought it was under fortitude. I'm looking for Master Chef, something like that. There it is. So it's under strength. Um, because it takes a strong individual to cook, that is true, you know, cast iron skills, they're heavy. So Master Chef, this, if you're playing a solo game, is super, super important um, for your first five, four points. So I would highly recommend that this is where you put your points because it's going to let you make bacon and eggs and different types of grilled meats and it's going to let you make baked potatoes and you can make like all these different things. That's a really good place to put your points and we will totally go through food and all that stuff in the next video. So we are at this point uh, pretty well situated. We have a storage thing. We have our campfire, which I will show you how to do in the morning in the next video. And uh, we're pretty well set up. So I will leave it here. In the next video, we will go over the basics of food and water because you can't just drink weird, muddy, like lake water forever. You know, that's going to give you the, the poops. Um, and we're going to go through a house and I'll show you a little bit more about combat and survival and how to start getting that progression going, how to get a forge going. So those are the kind of things we're gonna deal with in the next video and the one after. And uh, again, if you have any questions or anything specifically you want me to cover, throw it in the comments below and check out my um, links in the description for my Twitch channel and I will leave it there. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and I will see you next time, bye.